Good morning, everybody. And again, I'm thankful to um, the organizer to call us. Yesterday, we had a nice time with the minister and got the um, uh, something, some unusual type of an, um, welcome. Uh, that was a state welcome, something. I, I'm not used to that type of a police van going in front of you, police van going in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> spotting you everywhere. And then people, like, it was a, it was a very different um, type of an experience that I could not sleep till late night. I was just imagining how uh, these uh, people are, like, they are a very general person and very, uh, this thing. So uh, that was uh, thanks to this thing. I am uh, Dr. Hassan to do that. Uh, to, uh, like uh, the workshop means that we learn something. And then in learning, in an uh, at, the, at the outset, let me ask you how many obstetricians are there in this audience? Okay. Please, please raise your hand. Raise your hand, please. <coughs> there are only one. Yes, okay. Okay, so then sonologists are there. So let me uh, tell you that uh, we play, we as a sonologist play a great role in preventing intra-implant fetal death or IUDs. And uh, the, uh, the ultrasound is ever changing and the guidelines are coming very fast, changing very fast. It is a simple machine to acquire. It is a simple technique to learn. So if we have an article to learn, but I can see all of you are um, here because of that, then we can learn something. At the end of the day, if we learn at least few things, then probably our visit to Bangladesh and um, this thing will be successful. So I, I, I'm, a, I'm a committee chairperson of Federation of Obstetrics Society of India. And the, uh, the uh, committee is called Genetics and <coughs> Medicine Committee. That is our president, vice president, and the chairperson. And I, the first talk is first ultrasound, where and why. So, can you tell me how many ultrasounds should be done in an uncomplicated pregnant woman? As many as you can. Every antenatal visit, no. So, the the first thing is very clear that. Ultrasound will not replace our stethoscope. Ultrasound can supplement our stethoscope. Our clinical examination can be supplemented by ultrasound, not replaced by ultrasound. So then we know that every antenatal visit should not have an ultrasound examination. So if we know that, then we need to know that when should we do ultrasound. Before knowing when should we do ultrasound, how many ultrasound, we must follow this ALARA principle or what is called as as low as reasonably um, uh, achievable. So this ALARA principle tells you that where, as and when required definitely you will do it an ultrasound and specifically power doppler and uh, uh, the color flow in an early gestation may be harmful for the baby though it is not uh, exactly documented. So when do we do ultrasound? First trimester, second trimester, third trimester? Never, ever, one, two, three. Any answer? How many? Three. three. Anyone who is two? Yes. Few people are two. Many are three. And anyone who is for only for one? Nobody. So probably we are uh, doing ultrasound quite comfortably. So let me go on to the lecture and then at the end we will discuss how many. So first trimester, if we are doing an ultrasound at 6 to 8 weeks, what is our aim of doing it? We want to see where is the pregnancy, so location of pregnancy, then how many fetuses are there? It's a single term twins and we can diagnose, then we have gestational age estimation. This is the most important thing so that our subsequent management and the timing of delivery will depend on this gestational age of the patient. If you are writing, as a sonologist, writing that on so and so date, the fetus is 8 weeks, then we start from 8 weeks, another 32 weeks, it becomes 40 weeks, and our date of delivery is determined by the first ultrasound, because many of the women, they forget their last period, and 
they may be irregular period whereby the pregnancy may be a late or an early pregnancy and of course uterine and adnexal pathology to be looked for so many times we encounter uh, fibroid which has fast diagnosed and even a tumor like 10 to 12 centimeter first time detected at least after going from here I got two patients who has got 12 centimeter over any tumor during pregnancy and 20 weeks has to have an operation during <laughs> so that huge uh, uh, over in tumor so you must look into your adversary do not please put your probe onto the abdomen and then see single life fetus SLF single life fetus 6 weeks please do not do that Ri uh, look into your adenexa and you may sometimes find something which is very very different so why should we do it if otherwise in a normal pregnancy no patient is normal absolutely primary gravida and an uncomplicated pregnancy should I go ahead and do an ultrasound at 6 to 8 weeks probably not so uh, there is some indication however there is some indication of doing it and if the woman has got pain abdomen bleeding if there is previous history of ectopic pregnancy the chances of recurrence is 10 percent so definitely you will pick it up as early as possible and then get medical therapy once you know why you want to do it previous ectopic you do it so that we can give medical therapy to this woman and can avoid a surgical management of ectopic then no uterine malformation or it is a IVF pregnancy so you would like to know confirm pregnancy and then to see how many pregnancy how many fetuses are there so these are some indication of doing an ultrasound at 6 to 8 weeks so do not go ahead and this is a uh, this is the picture of an ectopic pregnancy detected just uh, this was uh, last week probably and that this was a tardinexa the patient had pain abdomen we did an ultrasound and then saw ectopic pregnancy with a fire, ring of fire uh, on you have got if you put the doppler and the, around the, this uh, gestation you will find blood vessel and which is called as a ring of fire or uh, um, a sign and ring of fire sign indicates almost 100 percent that it is an ectopic pregnancy so and this is a multi a multi fetal pregnancy for uh, gestational sac can be appreciated so now we move on to the second uh, pregnancy that is second ultrasound that is can be done in first trimester. If you have gone to UK or any of the pretty medicine workshop, everyone will recommend you to do a, everybody talks about NTNB scan, NTNB scan, a 11 to 40 feet scan is now replaced, the name of it is replaced as and DNB scan or nipple translucency nasal bone scan. If we stick on to a ultrasound of 11 to 40 weeks, then probably it will be better. Uh, down, uh, and DNB means nipple translucency and nasal bone. And why it is seen is that it is a marker for fetal down syndrome. So, and the gestational age to look for it is 11 to 13 weeks, 6 days. So 11 to 14 weeks, so like practically you cannot always say 13 plus 6. So you, I have written 14 weeks. So 11 to 14 weeks, you can see, uh, 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 you can see, uh, the, uh, you can do the fetal measurements and then do some uh, marker which are seen more common in Down syndrome. If your nipple translucency is more, your nasal bone is not seen, your doctor has got a reversal, so then these are markers for Down syndrome. The woman is at more risk of having a fetus with Down syndrome, you subject her for further investigation. So as a sonologist, please, please advise our obstetrics colleague that I am seeing this, this, these are marker of Down syndrome and hence this woman needs further testing. What further testing at this gestation is you must be aware about selective fetal DNA in maternal circulation that is NIPD. Yes? No. No. Okay. So there are fetal DNA that comes onto maternal circulation. 
so you collect a, uh, like uh, the pregnant woman's blood after 12 weeks and then this DNA, FED DNA can be extracted and can be looked into if the fetus has got Down syndrome or not. And that is called a cell free fetal DNA in maternal plasma. The cost of this test in India is 8,000 rupees. None of the government hospital does even in India. It is outsourced to different countries or in in-house in India, few private lab have done it. And the most common lab that is being used is BGI, which is in Hong Kong. So, and 99% you can pick up Down syndrome. So this, you are collecting a mother's blood, sending to the lab. Lab is giving a report whether the fetus is affected with Down syndrome or not. So this has revolutionized our prenatal screening. So this is, uh, so hence, as a sonologist, if you are seeing a nuchal translucency which is more, a nasal bone which is absent, uh, a doctor's which is reversed, then you need to write the patient needs further testing, the fetus is at higher risk of having a Down syndrome baby. So now Down syndrome, as a, as a, in general population, the incidence is 1 in 700. So if you are delivering 700 women, one baby will be Down syndrome. So we need to pick it up. The sensitivity of ultrasound picking up Down syndrome by various parameters in first trimester is around say 75 percent. <coughs> so if you are a good sonologist, you can pick up 75 percent of your Down syndrome. So, and then apart from this Down syndrome features, you can again estimate gestational age if you have not done it and see some congenital malformation. World is moving towards detecting congenital malformation in first trimester, though overall detection rate is 51 percent. So this detection rate of, okay. So this is, nipple translucency needs to be measured properly. So you first, your fetus has to be on this position. So please remember how do you take nipple translucency. The fetus is facing up. It should not face down. Your image is enhanced so that it, it occupies the two third of the screen. It is properly enhanced. It is in neutral position. That means the mandible and the chest has got a good distance. The fetus is not hyperflexed or <coughs> hyperextended like this. So it is, and your palate. You are seeing, this is the palate, and you are seeing the palate which is a straight line. And there is a space between nasal bone and palate. So if you are seeing, that is a very, very good image. So in the machine, you can see this, freeze it, zoom it, so that you can zoom up to this. And you see this is, there is equal sign, or you see the skin, and underneath the skin there is nasal bone. So you see the nasal bone, nasal bone is present. And then you measure the nipple translucency. Machine has got an automated nipple translucency measurement. So you can go on to auto NT, and then put your box onto this area, the machine will give it, or sometimes it is measured manually. So manually you need to measure it. So this is uh, how NT is to be done. But then remember, NT you should not take if your CRL is not between 45 to 85. So for practical purpose, I remember 45 to 85, it is exactly 84 millimeter. Sagrital section in position, this is what high magnification, proper caliper placement, and pre measurement you take, and highest you take. As an ultrasonologist, are highest. Very rarely it is the average. So in MD, the highest value is taken. In middle cerebral artery, peak systolic velocity, the highest measurement is taken. So you measure three measurements, and the highest value is taken. So this is a picture of reverse uh, A wave in ductus and ductus looks like this. This is the A wave which is gone down. Actually ideally I should have done it the opposite way. I uh, like night I was putting this uh, picture. So anyway this is uh, a ductus uh, which is A wave is reverse. If A wave is reverse then the fetus is at a higher risk of having 
down syndrome if not then heart defect so your uh, there is proper uh, how do you take this your volume has to be uh, 0.5 to 1 mm the gate the angle of insulation should be 30 degree your frequency and sweep sit speed to be um, to be uh, like properly yeah. so um,